Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Will Gerling, sports and performance nutritionist, and today we're talking about caffeine. Woo! What does caffeine actually do? Well, I did a really good video with a link in the corner now that you can go check out, which is my top five supplements for you that actually work with caffeine being one of them. Caffeine, and when you take it in the right amounts, manages to improve cognitive performance, it reduces your rate of perceived exertion or your pain threshold, it improves endurance performance and your neuromuscular actions so it makes them a bit faster. So it really does have an effect on us and the body. Today we're looking at that meta-analysis paper that came out in 2019 by a guy called, very poorly pronounced, Grigik. And it was a study that was a meta-analysis of meta-analyses papers. So essentially, a meta-analysis paper is a combination of lots and lots of papers looking at a specific subject. And this is a meta-analysis of all those papers to give an overall consensus across the board in performance. So it is a very good study. So I'm just gonna go straight in with it. It improved performance across the board. There was a range of all these 11 meta-analyses papers that looked at a two to 12% improvement in performance. And this ranged across a few different areas, muscle strength, muscular endurance, speed, time trials, total time to exhaustion, cycling obviously included in all of those, running, uh, peak power jumps, uh, jumping in general, um, lifting. There is a huge array of studies included and it saw an improvement in all of them. Now, there are some people that didn't respond within these studies and there are people that obviously did respond with the majority shifting towards these people that did respond. So we know that it works. It works across a whole array of sport. It works a whole, whole array of different forms of sport and what you're doing, speed, power, strength, etc. So it does apply to you if you want to improve performance. So the next thing to know is really the dosage. How much do you need to be having? Well, the general consensus of this paper is that you need to be having between three and six milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Now, if you're obviously 70 kilo male or female, 75 kilo male or female, that's a really good number for us to work with because the average espresso has around 75 milligrams in it. So your typical medium black coffee Americano is gonna have around 150 grams. Now, really, you just need to times that by three and you've got an idea about how much you need to be having. Three is the minimum that we see, with six being the maximum. And a lot of the studies did actually just focus on six milligrams, which is a huge amount of caffeine. And I don't think, as a personal bias, that you need that much to see an effect. There are plenty of studies that show an effect at the lower dosage. So what might that look like? Obviously, as I said, 75 kilo male or female, one espresso is gonna be one milligram per kilogram body weight. So you're looking about a triple espresso to a quad espresso, or if you're a very big guy like myself, you know, I'm 102 keys, then I'm looking at more that 300 milligrams and more like four or five espressos, which is a huge amount of caffeine. Now you may be wondering, I drink coffee all the time, I don't feel the effects. Does habit and habitual intake have an effect on its performance? It's really interesting, it's a really great question. And these meta-analysis or this particular paper covering these meta-analysis papers did not cover it. And it is an area that needs to be further researched. But if we think about it, there seem to be two main points. One is that Generally speaking, across the board, when they did look at if they habitually had high intakes or not, people still performed better. And it could be dose dependent. So some people may respond more to low doses where others are at high doses. So maybe working on that and seeing if there's an effect for you is obviously a worthwhile 
thing. And also I wouldn't just jump in at six milligrams either. I would start at the low point because you're gonna really feel that six. It's also thinking about the placebo effect. If you have no coffee, no caffeine in your diet, and then you get given a performance enhancing amount of three to six milligrams, you're gonna really feel it. And that feeling is definitely gonna be heightened and may make you feel like you could work harder, which is why the placebo effect is a real thing and needs to be counted. And it's quite hard to look at that within caffeine studies because you're gonna know when you're on the uh, the actual study that's got caffeine and when you're on placebo. Now, a lot of these studies don't actually use coffee. They use a caffeine supplement. So you could beg the question, does coffee actually work? I think the main issue and the main thing with using coffee as a measure is that the variable of caffeine or the amount of caffeine in coffee does vary a lot. And there was a really great study that compared caffeines across just brands like McDonald's, Cafe Nero, Costa, Starbucks, etc. And within a shot or an espresso shot of, ca of coffee, there was a huge array of caffeine content. So even if you are getting your cup of joe, that you may not be getting the caffeine you think you are. And if you don't know how much caffeine you're getting in your coffee, it could be unreliable. So you need to throw up pros and cons. Maybe you wanna do a combo. Maybe you wanna do a coffee and some caffeine supplement at the same time. The choice is yours. But nonetheless, I do think coffee works. You just gotta get a good one. So we've gone over how much you need to be having, we've gone over the fact that it does work and whether you should be taking coffee or caffeine and if your habitual intake has an effect. Now, the last thing to really talk about is time. And it takes around 60 minutes for orally ingested caffeine to peak within our blood. So that means if you take it 60 minutes before you start or at the start line, then it's gonna take an hour for it to reach those peak levels in your blood and give that performance enhancing effect. So it really does depend how long your event, your race, whatever session you're doing. Now, caffeine also stays in our body for 12 hours, which is huge, which means if you took it on late in the evening or even afternoon, let's say 4 p.m. and you took a double espresso, that means at 10 o'clock at night, you still have an espresso's worth of caffeine in you. So you really wanna pick and choose when you use caffeine. I wouldn't use it for evening sessions. I would focus on sessions where you're taking performance amounts when performance is really needed. Are you doing a test? Are you racing? Are, is it a key session in general? Are you doing a carbohydrate restricted session where you're already gonna be struggling for energy, so taking on caffeine is gonna reduce your rate of perceived exertion, as we've explained, and also it does improve your ability to oxidize fat, which if you are doing carbohydrate restricted training is gonna really help you. So there you have it. We've been over all the areas of caffeine and you've got a really good idea about whether you should be taking it, what it can do, if it would help you, and so on. What do I really think? I think that you need to be picking and choosing those sessions. I think you need to build up your tolerance in the sense of going between three and six milligrams. Don't jump up to that high amount. I think generally reducing habitual intake is probably a good idea, not exceeding maybe one cup of coffee a day. Um, though there's no science backed to that. What I do notice as a practitioner working with people on nutrition is that people who have a lot of coffees maybe two, three or four cups of coffee a day, especially their double espressos, is that they're using that caffeine, they're using that coffee to perk them up and help them get through their day. And they're not actually fueling their body adequately and they're struggling, so they're needing that caffeine. They're like, I need caffeine, I'm struggling, I'm tired, blah, blah, blah. So they're not focusing on their nutrition, they're using caffeine to help improve their feeling of energy which is the wrong way round. So maybe think about that if you are one of those people. And this is definitely something that I do with all the you know amateur athletes, the people that are just doing everyday events that I work with. And there we have it. We have all our tips and understanding about caffeine and how we should do it. If you really enjoyed today's video, drop a comment down below. Let me know how many coffees you have, how you like your coffee. And remember to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I look forward to you tuning in again soon. Remember guys, fuel for the work required and I'll speak to you soon.